Recently, I've been thinking about how much water my cat should drink. I've been reading things about how important it is for the cats to get enough water to stay healthy. But I'm not sure how much enough is or how to get them to drink more in a practical way. So I did some research and I'm sharing my findings with you in this video. My name is Francisco and welcome to Nine Lives to Live where I and my three cats, Calypso, Skyfall, and Mr. Muffin help you improve the lives of your indoor cats. But back to water. All mammals need water. They lose it every day and it needs to be replaced. And if it's not replaced, they get dehydrated and it can be very serious. Now, most cats regulate their own water and their own hydration. So why is it an issue for cats? Now, people who study cats say that cats are desert animals that came from the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East thousands of years ago and were transported all over the world by people. Because they're desert animals, cats are very efficient at extracting water from their food, at retaining th that water in their bodies, and at concentrating their urine. One reason we need to pay attention to how much our cats drink is because they hide their dehydration very well, and once we notice it, once it becomes obvious, it's already serious. And because they're a desert animal, they don't have a very strong thirst instinct. The most important thing to notice is if your cat is losing more water than normal. Uh, some possibilities are vomiting and diarrhea for obvious reasons, so check under drinking if your cat is sick. That water needs to be replaced. And this happened to my cat, Mr. Muffin, uh, a while back. He got nauseous and he wouldn't drink. I had to feed him water with a plastic syringe. But more on that later. Cats can also lose water from overheating. So if they have a fever or get overheated uh, because of a hot summer or in hot regions, you should be particularly attentive. They can also lose water from having diabetes because they get rid of the sh extra sugar by peeing and that can cause dehydration. Cancer, hyperthyroidism, kidney disease, medications, nursing kittens, all of these conditions also accelerate the loss of water in cats. Dehydration can also be caused by lack of water in their food. Out in the wild, they eat little animals and they have moisture in their bodies. About 70% of what they eat is water. So out there, cats get their water from what they eat for the most part. But here in our homes, especially if they eat dry food, the situation is different. Dry kibble, it has about 10% moisture versus 70% for say a mouse. Wet canned food is about 70 to 80% water. Now, I'm not gonna get into dry food versus wet food in this video, that's a video for another day. Just, but this is just to say that wet food has water and dry food does not, which is obvious. So all cats need to get water. The question is, how much? The rule of thumb is three and a half to four and a half ounces per five pounds of body weight that the cat has. Now, I find this rule unhelpful. So let me figure it out. To make it easier, let's just say four ounces per five pounds of body weight. So Calypso here weighs eight or nine pounds. So if I want to figure out how much, how many ounces she'd need to drink, I'd have to multiply, what? No, wait, I would have to divide eight pounds over five and multiply that times four ounces. I'm confused. Hmm, I don't remember how to multiply fractions. All this math is killing me. Wait, I'll ask Google. Okay, 6.4 ounces. But how much is that? My measuring cup only measures cups and milliliters. So I need to convert ounces into cups. A cup is eight ounces, so that's a little bit more than three quarters of a cup per day, per cat. My brain is beginning to hurt, maybe yours is too. So the next question is, how much is your cat drinking? You can't sit around and watch their water bowl all day. You have things to do. Are you really gonna be measuring all their bowls? Actually, the way to do it would be to measure how much you pour into their water bowl and after 24 hours, measure how much is left. Now, if your cat is sick, you might need to do exactly that, but most of us do not need to go that far. We need a better way to get a general idea if our cats are drinking enough. Here's a better way. Don't measure how much they're drinking, measure how much they're peeing. When you clean the litter box, count the number of pee clumps. There should be about two or three per cat per day. I have three cats, so in their three boxes, I wanna see six to nine clumps. This is so much easier. Now, if your cats go outside, this won't work. 
Now, one advantage to knowing how much your cats are drinking is being able to see if there's any changes. For example, if a cat gets diabetes, it will be drinking a lot more. Now, if you have more than one cat, you will not know exactly which one has the problem, and so you will have to start watching them carefully. So what are some of the signs that your cat is dehydrated? Here is a list that I found. Low energy. Weakness. It can't climb or play like it used to anymore. Panting. This is rare for cats, but it does happen. It's not eating. It has sunken eyes. It has tacky gums or dry gums. One easy way to check is to see if their skin is tenting. Just pinch a little bit in the back between their shoulder blades and pull it up and see how long it takes to snap back. If it snaps back quickly, your cat is probably not dehydrated. If it snaps back slowly, it probably is. And if it doesn't snap back at all, you have a medical emergency and your cat should go to the vet immediately. Now, this method is not perfect because it depends on how much body fat your cat has and other factors that you can't uh, account for. This is a good moment for me to say, if it's already not the parent, that I'm not a veterinarian and this is not medical advice. I'm sharing you what I have learned through my own research. So if my cats get dehydrated, what I do is take them to the vet immediately and that's what you should do too. But the best step is to prevent dehydration in the first place. You can put out water bowls, but you can't make them drink. So what's the best way to entice our little darlings to drink a little bit more? Here are some suggestions. First of all, their water bowl could be adding a flavor they don't like. Plastics are the worst. They have strong flavors. Metals are better, but the best are ceramics and glass. And another benefit of ceramics and glass is that they're heavy and less likely to tip over. People are the same when it comes to taste. Okay, that's okay. Okay, this is better. Okay, this is best. In case you're wondering, this is not product placement. Coke is not paying me to show the bottle here. No, here. Just joking, they're really not paying me. The Coca-Cola company has no idea who I am. Mm. But this is pretty good. Another possibility is to try a wide water bowl filled close to the top. Some cats don't like to have their whiskers touching the edge of the bowl. I found this ceramic dish at the Salvation Army store for $2.50. It's a perfect water dish. Also, change the water in the water bowls frequently, daily if possible, and wash them. Nobody likes drinking from a dirty cup. Some cats prefer moving water, and they'll drink from a dripping water faucet. This is natural because in the wild, moving water is less likely to be contaminated. So you might consider trying a water fountain. My friend Jenny's cats eat a lot of dry food, and three of them like the fountain, two don't. So you have to test the fountain on your cast to see if they like it. You also have to clean inside and the filters, so it's a little more work than a simple bowl. Jenny really likes this PetSafe Drinkwell fountain. I'll put a link in the description in case you want to get a similar one. You should also have several bowls that they can choose from and put them in a quiet place where they can see around. This is especially important if your cats don't get along very well with each other. They might be more cautious if they think they might get pounced on. Remember that cats are also prey animals and they are cautious about being in vulnerable positions. We have all seen those documentaries where the lions take down the animals drinking at the water hole. Now don't put their water bowl next to their food or next to the litter boxes. Cats consider food like dead prey and they don't leave dead prey next to their watering hole. As for the litter boxes, that's pretty clear. Now some cats prefer cool water, so cool it down before putting it into their bowl. And in the summer, you might put in a couple of ice cubes, but make sure they're fresh and not the ones that have picked up the weird flavors from the freezer. For cats, it's like drinking from a cool mountain stream rather than a warm stagnant pond. If they already eat wet food, you might consider adding a little bit of extra water to create more gravy, but don't make it soupy. You should also consider that your cats might not like the flavor of your water. City water in some places might have residual chemicals. Weld water might have water softeners or other flavors that they don't like. Now, I'm not suggesting that you buy spring water for your cats, but you might try filtered water. Brita has some good products that are easy to use and not too expensive. I'll put a link in the description below for one of their water pitchers in case you're interested. You might also try adding a little bit of flavor they like to their water. Tuna water or a water from boiled chicken can both be useful, but don't uh, use any tuna that's been in brine or 
uh, commercial broths that uh, both of those have way too much salt for a cat and have other flavors and herbs, etc., that they might not like. Just add a little bit, maybe half a teaspoon, and see if it makes a difference. Now, if you do use that kind of flavoring, make sure that you change the water out every day. And if you're using a fountain, don't put it in the fountain because it would mess up your filter. You could also try combining the flavored water with the ice cubes and make flavored ice cubes. Just don't forget which ones are the cat ice cubes and which ones are for you. Now, I have saved the easiest and hardest technique for last. If your cats are eating dry food, try to add wet food to their diet. It's the easiest because all cats actually eat. It's the hardest because cats are finicky and they might reject the wet food. Try to add only a tiny little bit at a time. This will reduce the possibility that they will reject it and also prevent uh, possible complications like diarrhea. In extreme situations, you might actually have to force them to drink a little bit of water. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, a, a while back, Mr. Muffin got sick, he was nauseous, he wouldn't drink. And so I had to give him water from a plastic syringe while he was going through the phase. I was waiting for his appointment with the veterinarian and they suggested that I use a syringe and just put a little bit on his tongue. It wasn't very difficult and it got a little bit of water into him while he was feeling nauseous and not drinking. If you're interested in seeing what happened to Mr. Muffin, I made a video and I will put the link right here. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please like and share, and I will see you in the next one.